Hi guys, um, tonight I am going to show how I make coils with my drill. Uh, yeah, another drill video. I have had a couple people asking me where to find the video I made doing this and here on YouTube and I have not uploaded that video. Uh, that was from another group, and turns out I had already deleted it, so it was a little older, not too much older, but I'm going to just go ahead and remake the video, and I'm going to do it here. So, this is mainly what I'll be using. Um, got the drill. I'm going to be doing it with 20 gauge as my main core. This is going to be 24 and 28 gauge and I'm gonna do it in all copper all dead soft so 28 on 24 and then I'm gonna wrap that around the 20 so wire wise that's what I'll be using and real quick this is the coil that I'm going to show you how to make. I may not make this long of a stretch. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure I'll make it even to use it. I'm just going to try and make a new video. So this is exactly those gauges. 28 on 24 wrapped around a 20. And this is just 28 wrapped in between there. So you need your wire. You need your drill. I use these swivels this is an assorted pack I got on Amazon there's a bunch together right there so this is three of them I don't know why they're hooked together right now but so if you want to look for these you can find them by searching fishing swivel in Amazon or whatnot, just Google it wherever you shop. Um, you could probably find them at any sporting store that has fishing supplies or maybe even Walmart. I don't know. These are cheap. They have cheaper ones, they have more expensive ones, ones with much better ball bearings in here. So I Usually, since I use these cheaper ones, I will link, maybe I did this, I will link two of them together so that if one of these bearings stops turning and seizes up, the other one will start to turn. Hopefully, that's the idea, at least. So I'll link two of them together, um, which is why I got, you know, just a pack of them. Now, this here is my vice. Um, this is just from Lowe's. It's a workbench vise. Uh, it's not really a jewelry tool per se. Um, I use it for all kinds of stuff. So if I'm doing other projects around the house, you know, it's just a clamp. Um, this one has a little block on the back. I will sometimes hammer stuff on there. Nothing I want to have too fine a finish on just if I want something hammered it's already gonna be a textured piece because this block is a little bit textured um, but yeah it rotates and this is just what I use to secure my swivels um, I just clamp them in there and it's got a lot of weight so I can pull pretty good tension and it will not budge so this is what I use. You can use whatever, be creative. You can put a screw and a hook on something and just hook these to it, however you want to do it. And okay, uh, this is the 24 gauge. Right here, I have a decent length of the 24 gauge. I'm going to make this coil, like I said, I'm going to use it, make it pretty small one. 
This is just under 16 inches. I won't even need all of this. Uh, this is going to be the 20 gauge. So 20, 24, and then I'm going to go off my bobbin. I will, if you watched my other video on spooling the bobbin, since I'm doing this on a drill, I, I will do it off the spool too. I'll just have the, uh, the factory spool on the ground while I do this. A bobbin is nice too, but I will probably have to stop and pull some extra length out repeatedly. Okay. Now, because I have such a vast range, and I'm not just staying down here doing this, the focus might go in and out. Sorry if that happens. Last time I tried to do this on a video, that's what happened. Okay, so I got my 24... I'm just going to loop this around my swivel. Secure it right there. Okay, now that that is on there, I've moved this device over. I actually trimmed this down a little more so that I would be able to get it in the camera. Both the head of the drill and... Kind of, you should be able to still see the uh, the swivel there. Um, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to bend this up in an L shape. And that's so that it catches in the drill correctly. Then I'm going to wrap this... 28 gauge around up onto that L shape. So that way when I clamp it, I'm going to set it right in the center and have that L pop up into one of those little spots to catch it. And now it's clamped on to both wires. Let me just check that the drill is going the right way. doesn't really matter which way you twist them as long as you twist them all that way. So I'm going to get some excess out here. And I'm going to try to not speak so that I can turn the volume down in the editor. So I just pulled some more out of my bobbin, so that's like I said why I will sometimes just let the factory spool just kind of keep spinning so I don't have to adjust it. Now you notice before I start again, what I'm doing is I'm holding this wire very, very, very gently, um, at least usually with my pinky even when it's on the ground, just to hold it there so that I have control of the wire. And I have my index finger butt right up against the um, core wire. <clears throat> and I don't want to pull it this way and I don't want to push it that way. I really am just trying to keep enough tension to where the wire 
should guide itself to go right next to itself. So, really barely any tension. I have enough tension here to where I'm not pulling on the drill. Sorry, that shook a little. I have my drill set up where I have just enough tension. And I shouldn't need to pull on the drill at all. See, so <laughs> you may start to lap. So if you don't give it that space, it will start to curl over itself. Um, that usually only happens to me when I have to stop repeatedly to give myself more space on the bobbin. So. Okay, that should be good for me for now. Uh, you don't, last time I did the video, I said that, you know, you want to leave double the space. So if you want to coil, um, if you want to coil, say, that long, you would coil about double that. And then when you're doing your coil, you would leave um, double that length out. You don't necessarily need double this length out. I don't know the exact math on it, but you definitely want extra wire outside of your first coil. Uh, you saw me push it tight together. It's You only have to do that if it's really, really wide, the gap. There may be a couple imperfections here where it's a little wider. But just a little bit's not a big deal because this wire is going to start to space out as you wrap it around it. And that's the reason you want the extra wire. This line right here where it ends, most of this extra wire will get used up as you coil it around the 20 gauge. This line will move down. It'll start pushing the wire down. If you don't have enough, what happens is you'll end up with a section of just tube it's going to be hollow it's going to be a coil but with no core in it so keep that in mind and i'm just going to go ahead and clip like i said this is going to be somewhat small coil clip that go ahead and clip it off of the swivel Okay, so I got that off. Now that's the end, not so pretty, that I had in the drill.
there you go i've cleaned it up a little bit just uh unraveled it snipped it and i left the l there because here's my 20 gauge i'm gonna make an l on here as well because it's going to go in the drill I'm going to do the same thing with this 20 gauge. Okay, and all I've done is I got the uh, wire set into the drill. I got it attached at the swivel again, same way. I've given it, given it a couple spins. Uh, if you have a two cycle drill with a setting, one would be a weaker setting, a slower setting, and then Two is going to be faster. For this part, I will set it to one. Let's see if I can. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So I slowed down a bit because I could feel the end of the wire and I'm just going to do what I've already got which is one wrap around. Go ahead and clip the excess here. And let me get this off of here. I got it off the drill. Um, did that off camera just because it shakes the table quite a bit and my tripod is mounted to the table. So I'm just going to clean this edge up a little as well. Straighten out that wire. And that one. And just do the same thing with this side, which is give it just one wrap around. And that's going to do it for that coil. Um, now, I can, if I want, which I usually do, don't always do, go ahead and take my 28 gauge. I will spin this in that crease.
And I like to have my 28 go just over that one or so wrap. Just to secure it in there. And there's your finished coil at this point. I don't know what else you can really do to it. So, I mean, that's how I do it on the drill. This is actually long enough for me to use on something. I'll probably use it on something here relatively soon because I did this today as well. Um, it's a different style coil. This one is all by hand. Uh, I could possibly do the first part of this on the drill too. I just didn't. So when, cause it uses two core wires and what I would do is use a paper clip. These are two squares. You could use round. I used square cause I thought it might look good with the uh, drop off on the edge. And what you would do is you would put your two wires in the drill L-shaped in opposite directions so they both catch. Tie them off together, um, preferably parallel on your swivel. And then you would just use one or two uh, paper clips throughout it. And you would do it pretty close to where you're spinning. And you would not use a lot of tension and just kind of spin it. And then move those paper clips as you go. The paper clip will hold the two square wires or round wires um, parallel to each other so they don't start to bind and twist. So that first part I could have done on the drill. The second part was much, much harder. Um, off the top of my head, I know this is 28 gauge around 2... 24 square, I believe, but I'm not positive. And then this is just another 20 gauge core. So I'll probably use these both on the same piece. They're about the same size. So, but that is how I do mine on the drill. And I can do short ones really quick. I can do long ones quicker than I would by hand for sure. So, really quick before I do go though. Uh, I wanted to bring up that I've seen a couple people since I posted the first video I did in my group, having one or two issues, mainly one where the wire would snap. So, main reasons your wire would snap in the drill would be your swivels have stopped turning. Um, maybe not even consistently, but are stopping and then going and then stopping and going. And like my other video, I explained if you are twisting a wire and one end is not twisting with it, you weaken the integrity of the wire. So as every time that the swivel isn't moving, the drill is spinning and eventually that wire will snap, especially with any tension and pressure pulling the drill. So that's the second thing, is not to pull the drill. You really don't want to pull on the drill. You want to find where that tension is, and you just set your hand on the trigger, keep the drill where it's at, and then pull that trigger. You don't want to pull back on the drill. It will either snap somewhere in the line, or it will snap at the head. Uh, it's honestly better if it snaps at the head, because you can just redo this end right here and stick it back in and you haven't messed up the rest of your coil. So that's really all there is to that. If there are any other questions, comment below and I will answer them. So thanks for checking out the video. Uh, I do not think I will do the other video. 
I may do it tomorrow. It won't be uploaded this weekend. I'm going to upload this either tonight or tomorrow. So if I do the video that I was saying on the on the full piece wire wrap, it probably won't be uploaded till the middle of the week. So I still plan on doing it, just probably not right now. I thought this one was a little more important since I just did a video with a coil in it and some people were asking how to do the coil, where that video was. So that's how I do it. This is the same gauges I used on that piece in that first video I, I uploaded. So hope you all found it helpful. I'm kind of tired tonight, but I wanted to get this done for you. So have a good night. I appreciate you all.